Okay, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to Engineering for Change, or e for c for short. Today, we're very pleased to bring you a special segment in E4C's 2016 webinar series focusing on mobile data collection. My name is Yana Aranda, and I'm the Director of Programs here at Engineering for Change. And I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. I'd like to take a moment now to tell you a bit about the mobile data collection series. The widespread availability of mobile communications offers international development researchers, practitioners, and students new tools and techniques for collecting field data and determining success of projects. So, we've partnered with the Development Impact Lab at UC Berkeley for a series of six webinars to introduce a sample of survey software tools and demonstrate how to implement each tool in practice. For a recorded introduction to this series, please visit the E4C homepage. Today's webinar is the fifth in the series featuring Premise and introduced by Joe Reisinger, the CTO and co-founder of Premise. Our final webinar in this series will be with Open Data Kit, or ODK, presented by Waylon Brunette on April 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to make a recommendation for specific platforms, future topics, and speakers, we invite you to contact the series team via the email addresses that you see on the slide now. Now, before we move to our presenters, I'd like to tell you a bit about E4C and who we are. E4C is a knowledge exchange platform and global community of over 1 million designers, engineers, development practitioners, and social scientists leveraging technology to solve quality of life challenges faced by underserved communities worldwide. We invite you to join E4C by becoming a member. Members enjoy access to relevant and current news, professional development resources, including jobs and fellowships, and a growing database of hundreds of poverty alleviating products in our solutions library. E4C delivers a unique user experience based on user site behavior and engagement. Essentially, the more you interact with our site, the better we are able to serve you resources that meet your needs and interests. We invite you to join our passionate global community and contribute to making people's lives better across the world. Check out our website to learn more and sign up. We're excited to collaborate with Dill on this and future webinars. Dill is an international consortium of universities, research institutes, NGOs, and industry partners addressing global poverty through advances in science and engineering. Dill is headquartered at the University of California, Berkeley, and was launched in 2012 with support from USA, uh, the U.S. Agency for International Development through the U.S. Global Development Lab. This leverages the innovative capacity of world-class universities to design development solutions which couple new technologies with novel economic and behavioral interventions. Bill calls this approach development engineering. Now the webinar you're participating in today is part of our professional development offerings. Our webinar series is a real-time and on-demand resource showcasing the best practices and thinking of development practitioners. Information on upcoming installments in the series, as well as archived videos of past presentations, can be found on our webinars page as well as on YouTube. If you're following us on Twitter, I'd also like to invite you to join the conversation with our dedicated hashtag, hashtag E4C webinars. Now a few housekeeping items before we get started. Let's see where everyone is from today. So in the chat window, which is located to the bottom right of your screen, please type in your location. And I'll start us off with my location. I'm joining everybody here from New York this morning or this afternoon. Um, so if you don't see the chat icon, just click on uh, the top right-hand corner. Any technical questions or administrative uh, queries should go into the chat window. During the webinar, please use the Q&A window located below the chat to type in your questions for the presenter. Again, if you don't see this, you can just click the icon at the top right-hand corner of the screen. I see we have folks joining us from the UK, from Washington DC, from Jersey. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, for the following webinar, to request a certificate of completion showing one professional development hour, PDH, please follow the instructions on the top of the E4C professional development page, and the URL is listed. If you're listening to the audio broadcast and you have any trouble, try hitting stop and then start. You may also want to try up opening WebEx in a different browser. Now, with that, 
I'd like to take a moment to introduce today's presenter, Joe Reisinger, who is the CTO and co-founder of Premise, a mobile technology platform orchestrating and crowdsourcing the collection of microdata for precise and robust economic measurement, uh, which we'll hear more about in a few. Joe holds a PhD in computer science from the University of Texas and spent his academic career building natural language understanding systems at Google Research and IBM TJ Watson. Prior to co-founding Premise, he was Chief Scientist at Meta Markets. So with that, I'd like to welcome Joe and turn it over to him. Great. Uh, thanks, Yana. Super excited to be here. Um, my name is Joe. I co-founded uh, Premise. Um, today, I wanted to share with you all some ideas um, about modernizing uh, statistical data collection, um, particularly targeting uh, local expertise um, in the field uh, via uh, mobile uh, mobile smartphones. Um, so the the world and uh, and human society more generally are is becoming increasingly more complex. Um, the drivers of this, you know, ranging from uh, things like increasing interconnectedness and span and of, of international trade um, to the rise of, you know, extreme weather events um, because of systematic uh, climate change. Um, to keep up with this, you know, relentless rise in complexity, the way that we collect data and track global economic trends and understand the world has also evolved uh, significantly over time. The technology that we use, uh, technology platforms that we use are getting uh, incrementally more sophisticated. <clears throat> So the U.S. Census um, started with door-to-door -door, uh, surveys um, in 1790, uh, so, you know, more than about 226 years ago, uh, and this was, you know, backed by a constitutional mandate. Um, that continued, uh, you know, in more or less the same form for nearly 200 years um, until the first mass paper surveys um, that people filled out themselves. Uh, was mailed out by the, the 1960 census. This is a, a key uh, technological innovation in the 60s um, was that, you know, there was this uh, free response. Um, concurrently, uh, you know, around the same time during the span, you know, between the Great Depression, World War II, and there and after, um, you know, saw the kind of rise and adoption of, of telephone surveys as the, you know, as the telecommunications network started to span, um, the country from coast to coast, it made sense to, to call people up directly and gave a very interesting and useful sampling frame for doing that. And, and you know, these were things in measuring inflation expectations or, or, or unemployment. Um, the first attempts to call mobile phones, so non-landline phones, uh, for economic surveys uh, happened in the 2000s. Um, you know, the, the, one of the kind of the biggest and maybe arguably most successful uh, attempts was uh, the current population survey, CPS, uh, first started experimenting with, with calling mobile phones in 2004. Um, now, you know, 12 years later, you know, we're basically living in the future. Um, we're in, you know, this period of extraordinary technological innovation, um, and there's this just profound proliferation of new data sources, the web, mobile apps, satellites, drones, uh, Internet of Things, uh, and other embedded sensors. Um, all of this can help us derive um, an even richer understanding um, of, uh, of the world. Um, this, and, and, you know, and this, this, this kind of this technological sea change, this rise of mobile phones and, and the web and social networks um, has reduced the friction of point-to-point -point information dissemination, and, and it really knits together um, entire populations, uh, irrespective of, of borders. Um, premise uh, is situated as part of this conversation. Um, we're building technology to orchestrate uh, a network of people, uh, local citizens, um, and to orchestrate them collecting structured, verifiable information uh, about the world uh, using, you know, inexpensive and ubiquitous uh, Android smartphones. 
And we're doing this now in, in 34 different countries. The, the data that we collect helps us better understand the world, you know, track economic and human development trends uh, in real time. And, and these include you know, things uh, like price, pricing and market statistics, um, inflation, uh, resource security measurements or, or electrification uh, patterns in, in the development world. Um, the workflow on this slide probably looks familiar, you know, from a survey development, you know, from, from survey development at one end through data capture and validation to uh, presenting composite, uh, you know, aggregate uh, analytics and insights. Uh, we use this uh, platform to just, we use the mobile uh, the mobile smartphone platform to distribute research tasks directly to data contributors um, to collect and analyze the data. Um, and then as we're able to sort of preview analytics and, and, and patterns of the data as it arrives, we're able to adjust, you know, the questions uh, or survey instruments uh, or even the sampling frame itself um, really at any time with, 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 with a very, uh, you know, only a very small amount of effort. Um, nothing is, is fixed definitional in this um, in this model, you know, and, and there's a there's a very, uh, in my opinion, revolutionary dynamic feedback cycle here. Um, you know, the underlying uh, the underlying like technology platform basically links um, machine intelligence to you know local human intelligence via robust like highly instrumented uh, articulated um, channel. Um, the, the work that we do is made possible by, because of a single key technology, and that's, that's the mobile smartphone. Um, this is a photo of a data contributor on the Permis network um, performing a pricing task in, in Abuja, Nigeria. Um, a simple gesture, this, this, this Instagram gesture uh, of taking a photo with your phone is immensely important. It's something that's, that's fundamentally new and transformative. Um, you know, this really didn't exist even even 10 years ago. Uh, so in less than a decade, you know, smartphones have become ubiquitous. Um, each has, you know, more computing power than the Apollo project. Um, you know, today there are 4 billion smartphones in use. By 2021, the estimate is that over 80% of the globe, uh, 6.4 billion people uh, will, have, uh, will have mobile smartphones. And this device, you know, really is their tether, their lifeline, their transmission cable to the outside world. Not, you know, not just purely for communication, but, you know, for so many uh, on the premise network, you know, using their phone for the first time to earn uh, meaningful incomes uh, and participate in the emerging uh, information economy. Uh, so I wanted to take a look at some of the information that we can derive uh, from using uh, from using this this data collection channel. Um, so these are um, these are just a small sample of photos from uh, some recent submissions by Permis contributors uh, capturing food stables prices in Brazil. Um, this rolls up into a much larger um, consumer price indexing uh, consumer price index um, effort. Um, likewise, you know, the technique, the, 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 the technology uh, applied equally well to much more complex survey models. Um, these are example submissions uh, which show homes in, uh, you know, regional city in Kenya um, that are either, on, either connected to the, to the grid, the electric grid or not. Um, we use this model to build a map of electrification patterns across the town um, and the data contributors uh, went door to door, you know, verifying information and gathering feedback from residents, understanding kind of their willingness to 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 to, uh, to get on the grid. Um, we we're able to design and deploy this project uh, via the Android app in in, in only a few uh, few days. Um, I'm going to try to switch to a demo. Um, let's see if I can share my desktop. Um, Hopefully, hopefully everyone can see this. Um, so this is just sort of um, this is a mapping tool that we use internally, um, showing um, you know the, the town that we uh, did did one of the electrification surveys for, and you know here is just on the map, kind of house by house, um, 
whether the you know whether the uh, houses are connected to the grid or not, and we can actually kind of drill in and understand the determinants of you know what uh, what drives this adoption. You know, the we, we can look at specific um, specific types of structures um, um, and see like how see how the electrification patterns correlate, how the the actual layout of the, the town itself correlates with. Uh, for example, wall type of the of the buildings, um, or you know the size uh, the size of the uh, of the of the structure, um, and along the along the bottom here, um, you see essentially the evidence. Um, these are just the actual photos of the of the structures, uh, and the data contributors providing evidence that. There is, um, for example, there is a drop a drop connection from from the grid to the particular residence or or place of of business. Um, uh, okay, stop sharing. All right. Um, cool. Uh, what does the survey look like? Um, this is uh, this is sort of what the app the in app experience looks like. Um, for permanent data contributor for, for this particular task, you know you're you're faced with a list of a list of survey items, you know scouting buildings to electricity without electricity, et cetera. Um, and then as you walk through the task itself, you're asked to provide photographic evidence and then provide a set of metadata about um, about what you uh, what you what you found. Um, Another sort of you know complex and 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 to my uh, to my mind extremely interesting um, example you know last year we received a grant from um, the Bill and, and Melinda Gates Foundation to do financial inclusion mapping um, in Nigeria um, so as I'm sure everyone on this uh, webinar is aware like more than 2.5 billion adults don't have access to a bank account or Formal financial services, um, you know, and so in addition to verifying a set of existing financial access points, BMG wanted us uh, wanted to basically understand, you know, what was new, what, what had changed uh, since the last time they had run uh, this survey. You know, the goal is to help them understand the best places, like physical locations, in which to invest uh, in in financial access infrastructure. Uh, of course, the and of course the idea being that by increasing access, you can you know, bring people out of uh, out of poverty. Um, our contributors discovered 12,000 new financial access points, and then we took this new kind of more comprehensive map, um, layered it with transportation patterns, income levels, and basic demographic data to create kind of a more holistic uh, map and model of, of financial inclusion. Uh, so I'm going to try to show that one. Uh, okay. Um, so this is essentially what that looks like. Um, this is a small sample of financial access points coded, color coded by type. Um, you know, banks, mobile money, kiosks, uh, microfinance institutions, etc. Um, in and this is in Abuja, uh, Nigeria. Um, and what's you know, and so you know, these are you know, essentially. Um, each one of these is essentially um, a uh, um, you know an actual surveyed uh, surveyed location, um, and then the cool thing is you know we can we can use this aggregate data to kind of build better maps of you know what are areas to target um, you know what what essentially are the areas which have um, have you know good access to uh, to these institutions, and then what are the you know sort of population um, were the demographics of those um, of those um, of those areas? So you basically build these geospatial uh, models um, using uh, using the, the 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 data that we've um, that we've collected. Um, and you know what this sort of looks like is um, just one of this work again. So looking at the evidence, you know you have. Um, um, you have different uh, kiosks. Here's a mobile network operator that was identified, um, and you know we have we know exactly where that is on the map. And and then premise of course collects you know a huge amount of metadata about the survey itself. Um, that's super useful for um, validation, verification, but also understanding the contextualization of 
um, of these um, of these places. Cool. Um, one uh, just one final sort of demo that I wanted to show. Um, this is some work uh, we did in the Philippines for the World Bank. Um, and they, the, you know, the Philippine Finance Ministry wanted, was, was looking to monitor um, compliance on a, a fairly major tax policy implementation um, um, around uh, cigarettes and spirits. Um, basically, they, they rolled out a, pub, uh, basically, they're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to capture tax revenue uh, from these uh, so-called SIN items, um, and this is really critical to ensuring the sustainable funding of their uh, universal health care program. Um, you know, we're looking at, they're basically looking at the, they're basically implementing, it's basically implemented by, by holographic tax stamps, um, and the estimate is that every 1% of um, tax stamps, uh, every 1% of leakage, you know, leads to roughly $20 million in additional uh, revenues that's lost. Um, so data that get, we capture here is really critical to identifying non-compliance and designing better programs to increase um, revenue capture. Um, um, you know, this initiative is sort of intended to empower, catalyze and empower the Philippine government, civil society with the necessary tools uh, you know, to quickly and scalably and transparently uh, monitor compliance. Um, and, you know, in towards that end, um, essentially we built um, not only the monitoring, not only the monitoring implementation on our on our platform, um, but also the um, but also the, the 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 aggregate analytics and dashboarding uh, required to to make sense of the you know, to, to actually make policy decisions um, on, on the back of the data coming in. So this is the this is the dashboard that's actually live on the uh, Philippine. Finance Ministry website, um, and you can see, for example, over the course of the last year or so, you can see the rise in compliance um, with the, the 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 mandatory tax stamps, kind of ri rising from something like 50% up to near 100% penetration. Um, and you know, we can do this across. Um, we can very easily kind of break this down by different. Um, by different brands and try to understand like how different manufacturers, how different like cigarette manufacturers are, are actually um, um, kind of how, how they're actually uh, acting on, on on this requirement. Um, the interesting thing, I think, to my mind, like one of the most interesting things here is is not only can you see this over time, um, but you can actually, you know, we actually build maps of um, of this as well. Let's see if this loads on the Low Wi-Fi. Um, if not, I can show you. Yeah, okay. So here's here's the live you know here's a live map um, just of uh, cigarette prices in the Philippines by you know coded by by read by 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 state essentially um, looking at the average price per individual uh, cigarette. Um, and then we can you, we can break this down farther um, in, in some of the metropolitan, uh, some of the major metropolitan areas. The cool thing is, and kind of when you combine, you know, the, the longitudinal and cross-sectional uh, monitoring, um, you can kind of make these cool, you know, videos where um, we can monitor tax compliance by region over time, and, and you sort of see the. Um, <laughs> a little slow, a little fast. You can sort of see how, um, you know, how, 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 how this, um, how this, uh, how this spread out um, uh, region by region. Um, so where, you know, so what's next, right? Like where, where can we go from here? Um, you know, I, I can offer sort of like one, like small glimpse, um, you know, throughout this talk, we've been looking at, you know, just a, a massive, uh, um, we've been looking at a plethora of images from the, from the Plumers, uh, from Plumers data contributors. Um, this, you know, this, and you probably can't see very well, but like this misshapen blob is a two-dimensional representation of um, uh, all, uh, all images of rice. Um, 
taken uh, over the last 14 days, um, as seen by Primrose contributors around the world. This is the, you know, this is like the rice, this, this is the rice image manifold, uh, if you will. Um, so we're using, you know, deep learning technology, you know, the technology, the same technology that's originally, you know, uh, became the world champion at, 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 at Go um, and powers, you know, the visual recognition algorithms for Facebook and Google, um, you know, can be used to extract and structure information from these photos directly. Uh, in, in, in real time to help us understand the physical world. Um, you know, the, the patterns and characteristics in this 2D representation are discernible uh, even to the human eye. Uh, imagine, you know, just imagine if you could visualize uh, the full 2,000-dimensional uh, manifold, you know, what, what types of even richer attributes and characteristics um, could we automatically detect uh, using, using visual information uh, extraction? Um, you know, for price statistics, as one example, you know, as products and service availability becomes more homogenous, but also um, highly variegated, um, we in are increasingly relying on hedonics and characteristic assessment uh, for understanding what drives pricing. Um, we could actually use the technology to extract uh, these types of attributes directly. Um, and likewise, you know, for venue classification, you know, for the mobile, you know, for the financial inclusion example, um, you know, actually automatically, accurately classifying and characterizing um, venues and physical infrastructure for helping contextualize the, the evidence that we're, that, we're, um, that we're pulling back from the world. Um, so we're still, um, it's still very early days for us. We're exploring kind of the combination of a bunch of new technologies. Um, but, you know, we're super, you know, we're super passionate about uh, understanding the world better. And, um, we're hoping that the, the the technology that we are building will will fundamentally upgrade uh, that uh, that understanding. Um, thanks very much. Thank you, Joe. Um, this was really fantastic and such a rich presentation in a short period of time. And at this time, I'd like to invite our um, listeners to go ahead and submit their questions via the Q&A. We already have a question that's come in, and that's actually one that I was thinking as well, which is, you mentioned working with organizations such as the World Bank and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. How might smaller NGOs or researchers at universities work with Premise? Yeah, that's a great question, and we've, you know, it's 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 definitely one that we're, you know, we're keenly interested in, and and, and part of our our, our really our, our medium and long term strategy is around opening up the platform such that you know you don't need um, you don't need to be a large institution in order to work with us. Um, you can just uh, you you can have access to the, the the platform more directly. Design design your surveys, implement and execute them um, in areas where we operate. Um, we have we've piloted a couple of um, we have a couple of successful pilots with with academics um, in uh, you know working with food security researchers or working with um, um, folks in, in in international development um, implementing um, um, you know a, a pretty wide range of, of monitoring activities and it's something that we're we're definitely super committed to um, you know there's a lot. There's a lot of, of 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 additional infrastructure and 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 technology rollout. I think before we can really scale that up. But 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 even but even now, I mean, if 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 there are folks that 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 see that that see premise kind of fitting into their in their activities, you know, we we, we would love to 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 um, we definitely love to to talk to talk further for sure. That's fantastic. I guess that can serve as an invitation to our, our attendees to consider that offer. So in, in terms of some of the findings that you've had to date with the organizations um, that you're working with, are most of them published or available freely to um, anybody who is listening to this podcast or our, uh, webinar right now, or are they often just uh, directly for institutions or some components of them available? Yeah, so it's 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 a mix. Um, uh, many of our many of our customers um, are extremely committed to to open data. So so there's there's a, there's a fair amount of stuff that is um, you know freely available and and, and downloadable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and we like also kind of kind of company wise, you know, we're we're very interested in you know a, a lot of this data. A lot of this data has has more value. You know, data is sort of mm -hmm. like a in general, this type of data is a 
in many ways a public good, um, mm -hmm. and, and we're we're pretty committed to, to making it available. You know, the issues, of course, like on the you know the the the, the dark side of of open access data, of course, is is, mm -hmm. is privacy. Um, and you know, for us, because we operate you know a human network, you know, we're very um, we're very sensitive to issues about you know contributor identity and and, and protecting their um, their their privacy. And so that mm -hmm. that's sort of the that's sort of the complicating factor. But but in general, we're working actually kind of working with some we're working with some interesting uh, researchers on on in, particularly in differential privacy, looking for ways to make kind of as much as much data as available as possible while still um, you know while still protecting the identities and, and livelihoods of our of our data contributors. But it's but it's definitely something that we're 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 super committed to for sure. Very good. And we have another question that's come in. Um, how do you verify differences in food commodity varieties of the same commodity, for example, imported rice versus local rice and so forth, um, as this impacts price differentials? Um, yeah, that's a great uh, that's a great question. So we so specifically for I mean I, I can talk to some work we're doing uh, measuring purchasing power parities. Um, in those cases, you know we. We we take a uh, we we take a um, um, uh, and a we really take a, a specification based approach where you know the contributors are um, asked to price very specifically different um, types of rice um, you know different grades of rice essentially so so broken rice versus um, you know standard grade you know medium grain rice like depending on depending on the on, on the country. Um, you know, we and, and of course, those, those, those the characteristics of those of, of the specifications drive 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 pricing pretty immensely. Um, it's 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 super important to have um, you know so, so, so training and kind of understanding the problem are, are super important. And then you know we we, we actually can use um, we can also use the, the photographic evidence um, that we receive back in order to uh, to contextualize and understand um, um, those types of things. Uh, as well, but it's, it's sort of a you know it's, it's a mix of both you know kind of training the contributors to recognize and understand um, what actually matters in the survey, and then also kind of verifying and, and understanding uh, what comes back um, um, directly. Got you. And there's a there's a kind of a degree of specificity that's increasing for this specific question um, regarding the differentiation, and uh, we're going to kind of layer onto this. How do you accommodate? For alternate measurement units or weights, for example, by by pile or um, I'm sorry, I lost the question. Um, your photo in Nigeria shows commodities in a pile. Oftentimes, these weights vary arbitrarily or by type of commodity. So I think you already started speaking to the notion of training your contributors. But it, did you want to maybe add a little bit more color to that? Yeah, for sure. So so in general, you know, we don't. Um, you know, we're sort of we're sort of approaching this problem like tabula rasa, right? Like we don't actually know a priori how what even how even markets function in many of the countries that we um, that we enter. Um, we actually rely on uh, multiple phases of discovery and tuning to um, you know. So one, just finding finding where are the markets, when are they open, mm -hmm. how do they operate, who are the traders. Um, mm -hmm. Finding the set of products. Um, what are the important characteristics of the products that drive price? Uh, how do we refine the surveys to make sure we're actually accurately capturing, um, you know, indicators for those uh, for those those drivers? Um, and so mm -hmm. that that process is very iterative, um, and it you know it's 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 automatable to some degree, and, and we're getting actually much better at, at automating it. Um, but in general, you know, the, in general, what it looks like is um, you know, you collect a large number of prices, and you find, uh, yeah, you know, you collect a large number of prices that you are relatively sure are accurate, and you find, uh, for example, bimodalities in, in that distribution. So then, you know, that hints at the existence of additional attributes or characteristics that aren't mm -hmm. um, that aren't necessarily being captured. So then we have to go in and kind of refine. Um, the questions in order to to account for that that additional dispersion, um, but that whole process is is very iterative and it's you know it's it's there there are and I think there are very interesting ways to to automate it and we're and and we have we've done some amount of that but a lot of it's just like relying on having a good active channel to the data contributors having them tell us like hey like you asked this question but like you know I can buy 
I can buy things in all sorts of different sizes, and which you know which one do you want me to to actually to actually measure? So it requires having that open dialogue. So if we can pull on that thread a little bit, and uh, with respect to those contributors, that active tremendously large network, um, how are you engaging contributors? And in terms of compensation, um, what what is the model that you have for that? Yeah, for sure. So the basic the basic model is, you know, you anyone can download the app um, and onboard onto the platform. Um, there, you know, we're we're limited to to 34 countries, but but generally anyone in those countries um, that that meet, um, you know, can 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 onboard. Um, you know, once you're on the platform, you'll have access to to these these types of micro work tasks, um, and you'll typically be paid um, per capture. Um, mm -hmm. And the uh, you know the cost the the, the actual payouts of those captures are, are variable and they depend on a whole slew of factors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, typically you know typically the the biggest driver of cost is 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 how far you're going to have to travel yourself to to perform the task. And so you know depending like if I'm asking you to travel to the store next door versus I'm asking you to travel like 50 miles away, like that's that's going to really clearly determine kind of the value proposition. Um, and so a lot of the platform is is really geared towards understanding what are the factors and drivers of, of task uptake. Like what what do I need to do? What do I need to offer? What's like a fair price for mm -hmm. um, for work? And how do I how do I do that across you know so many so many different places? Um, mm -hmm. As you you know as the contributor gets better at um, you know as, as the contributor kind of kind of graduates up through levels. Um, we do have, you know, we, we maintain a, 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 a core of, of con uh, community managers and, and other, uh, and other, other um, individuals who um, help us kind of smooth over a lot of the, you know, so, so kind of the, you know, the, the fundamental issue, of course, like running this type of company from, you know, our perch in, 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 in Silicon Valley is that, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know, we're not the experts on the day-to-day -day experiences of, of the vast majority right. of people on our platform. And so we, we rely a whole lot on, on having that type of open communication channel and having very smart individuals help us, like, you know, explain to us why the things that we're, you know, asking for don't make sense uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in their context. And so like, really the, the platform itself is, is a, it's a mechanism for, for, for kind of vacuuming up that understanding of the world. Gotcha. Thank you. That's very insightful. And we've had a few more questions come in, so I'd like to make sure to address those. So um, this is a really exciting field, and, I, and this is something that the, the question asker has noted, and I completely agree. Um, and what uh, the, the individuals were uh, interested in is whether you utilize your powerful contributor network to undertake surveys on more human-centered economic development, particularly this listener is interested in, in it from the position of program evaluation. Yeah, so I guess like it's definitely worthwhile to think a little bit about the limitations of what we do. Um, one of the so, so so the easy easy things for us are you know operating in public spaces um, in a in a more or less like unobtrusive way, like documenting passively. Um, mm -hmm. Those types of tasks are are, are generally the easiest uh, and have the highest uptake. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, you have highly invasive tasks where you know you want to do a you want to do a, a consumption or you want to do like a consumer expenditure survey or like household survey, and so you're going door to door and like you're asking you have a very complex survey instrument. Um, that type of stuff, I would argue that this platform is is less well suited towards like like cases where you need highly highly trained enumerators um, who have experience working with. Um, you're know, working directly with other people. Um, at least, you know, at least the 2016 version of premise, like we're not confident enough in, you know, and, and there's, there's many like dimensions to this, but we're not confident in sending, like we're not confident in building a, a platform that sends random strangers to your house, right? Like that's a, it's not a, um, it, without without more vetting and understanding of the of the individuals on the network, it would it would not be a, a, a it would not be a, a quality experience for for, for anyone. Um, mm -hmm. That said, you know we do operate we do operate a few surveys um, where we have operational partners who are experts in uh, who are expert enumerators, uh, and then in those cases, you know you basically you you have you know you're implementing NGO or whoever it is um, training uh, you know training and vetting your workforce and then you kind of you, you just onboard them onto the premise platform and then have them perform 
the survey task. And then the, the benefits of that are, you know, you don't get you don't get access to um, a large crowd. You still have to do the training, but the, the benefits are are having standardization and and having mm -hmm. uh, having kind of the the, the platform and, and and app experience. Um, Absolutely. Um, so, and one more question, speaking more largely to the strategy for premise. What countries has premise worked in to date, and what countries do, do you expect to be working in over the course of the next year? Uh, so we we operate in about 34 different countries now. It's a mix of um, you know it's a mix of sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America. Um, you know we operate in a in a few countries in the developed world as well. Um, you know the 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 United States and 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 sort of bits of um, bits and pieces of Europe. Um, the uh, you know in terms of expansion. Um, in terms of expansion, the plans are um, essentially to, um, you know, really, you know, are, we're we're really kind of, I think, generally very very focused on on on, on those three areas: uh, Latin America, uh, Af uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, and and and, and Southeast Asia. Um, so probably the bulk of our expansion over the next um, the next year or so will be targeting those kind of, those those uh, those areas, um, and we're looking to expand probably from 34 to maybe 60 or 70 by, by the end of the year. Wow. That's a fantastic goal, and I'm sure uh, delights many of the listeners uh, on this webinar as they're likely interested in, in engaging with you. Um, so with that, I think we've covered the bulk of our um, – let me see. I don't. I don't see others at this time. So, if uh, if we haven't covered your question, or you have a question out there that you'd like to ask specifically, please do feel free to follow up with us via the webinar's email address listed on the slide. For those of you who are are interested, um, with that, I I would like to thank Joe uh, for joining us today. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, information about Premise, and um, I'd like to thank all of our attendees for joining us today as well. For those of you who are interested in having uh, the PH for this session, please uh, use the code listed on the slide. And with that, um, I'd like to close out the webinar and invite you all to join us for the next one. Thank you so much, and have a good afternoon or good evening or good morning, depending where you are. Take care. <laughs>